My name is John Fraser and I'm responsible for the European business of Hexagon Machine Control Construction Division. I'm responsible for the European direct business of scan lasers, mainly in Northern Europe. Scan lasers are wholly owned distribution channel for machine control. When we don't have a scan laser, we go through like a geo system. Like a geo systems, we employ our direct uh, people to do machine control for sales, service, and support. Where there's no direct channel for like a geo systems, we go through our partners, our third-party distribution partners for machine control. We also provide other solutions into the civil engineering marketplace, such as construction positioning products, and any solutions that we have in the group that meet the needs and requirements of our partners in the civil engineering and construction industry. So what we have here is an entry-level system for machine control. Entry-level for machine control for an excavator does not mean it's a basic, small excavator. It's an entry-level solution that can be attached to any size excavator. What we're really looking for is the position of the bucket. We want to give the operator the knowledge of where the cutting edge of that bucket is. How do we achieve that? We achieve that by attaching sensors. We have a bucket sensor, and here, for example, we have a boom sensor. That boom sensor is knowing the exact movement of that boom. That's all fed through a cable system and into the cab. And we'll just move over to the cab now. So we're now in the cab. So the operator needs to know exactly where his cutting edge of his excavator bucket is. And that's shown to him by the panel in the cab. So now that with all the sensors connected, we can give information to the user of where his cutting edge is. So you might want to place a bucket on the ground and say, I want to cut one meter down from that bucket. And he feeds in the figure into the panel and then you've got indication by a light bar exactly where his bucket is and how he's cutting down. And that's what we class as our entry level system attached to any type of excavator. And what we have at the show today is the ability for a customer to take this product away with him. The XC12 Lite is an almost off the shelf machine control system. The customer is interested, he takes away the box with him, inside the box is everything he needs. He then calls Scan Laser, always like a distribution partner who is supplying this product, and say, can you please come and install this product on my machine? So an entry level product, and we're now almost off the shelf machine control solution. So now we move up to a 2D excavator machine control system, and I'll show you this one on a model so you can see the components a little bit easier. What we have is we're measuring with the same sensors, these are actual sensors that would fit to a uh, machine. You see, we know the movement of the different components of the uh, excavating arm. But really, what we're asking for is looking for the cutting edge of the excavator. We also have a rotation sensor at the back, allowing us to understand the rotation and the pitch and the roll of that machine. So we know whatever orientation that machine is in, we can understand what is happening here. Control panel is where we feed in the information. We feed information of maybe slope, or we feed information of depth that we want to try and get to. Or in fact, we can actually feed in a profile. If we've got a profile going down, we feed that profile in, and we can then work to achieve that profile on board our 2D system. When that's all fed in, really, the customer is only really looking at the light bar. And the light bar is telling him the inclination or whether the bucket's high or low, again, with the values there. This is what we call our 2D excavating system. So now we're looking at our 3D system. But when we start, we're still interested in understanding what the cutting position of our bucket is. So we have the same sensors on board as what you've seen in the entry level system, and the same as what we saw on the 2D model. Exactly the same sensors, giving us an understanding and the movement of all the different uh, pieces that make up the excavating boom. But this time, the difference between 2D and 3D is a 3D machine control system gives you the position of that machine in a project. Whereas a 2D system is giving you the difference of maybe the relative position of the bucket versus a benchmark or the ground level and I want to cut one meter down. But we don't know where that machine is in the project in a 2D system. In a 3D system, we need to position the machine in a project. And we do that with GPS. And you see the two antennas on the back is providing GPS position into the system. It's an additional sensor in our um, whole system that's fed into the panel in the cab. And let's move to the cab to see what, we, what the operator sees. So we're now in the cab of the machine 
And what the operator sees here, we have the panel. You can see it's a larger panel for 3D than it is for 2D. That's because we want to see more of the project environment. We see the, the project itself, we see the, the model of the design that we've uh, fed into it. We also see the position of our machine on, that, uh, uh, on the design or on the model. We also see the position of the cutting edge of the bucket. As I said, all the sensors connected together allow me to understand where my cutting edge is. When I'm working, once I've fed it in and I'm in the location of where I want to work, I'm really only interested in, again, in the light bar that can give me where my position of my bucket is and it's up or down from there. So it's a guidance system for the operator to carry out his job with 3D, I'm giving him position because that's what the GPS is doing, it's giving position of the machine in the project. Let's have a look at the GPS sensors at the back of the machine. So we're looking at 3D, but the position of the 3D sensors is critical. Clearly with GNSS or GPS, we need access to the sky. So we can either mount on the back of the machine, the reason we have the mass is so we can get clear of the machine so we can get access to the sky. But on such a short tail machine such as this, there's no position to mount the GPS or mass, and hence we're having mounted on top of the machine that there. We have two antennas. We have one antenna which is giving us position. So there's a power box inside here that's given doing all the corrections, and the antenna is giving us the position of the machine. But as the machine's moving, we need the orientation. So the orientation of the machine is come from the power antenna up there a dual antenna solution to one to give us position, one to give us orientation of the machine. Construction telematics has been born out of the requirements of our customers. Often the machines are used in faraway places, which is difficult to access and involves many hours of transportation to go and install that machine. Then these machines are in use and working. And sometimes there's a, there's a tweak on the software or the customer can't remember how to do a certain functionality and therefore they're talking to us on our hotline support. But with construction telematics, it really allows us to understand the environment the customer's working in. We can dial into the machine, look at what the configurations are, look at the environment he's trying to work in, or the software models he's working on. So construction telematics is a service that we offer in uh, both scan lasers and Leica Geo systems to our customers. Construction telematics consists of remote serve, the ability to provide remote support, data serve, Data serve is the ability to transfer data back and forth for the customer. If you're working on a construction project or a civil engineering project, there's many different models that could be used and if the machine operator can remotely get access to the new and updated models without having to rely on USB sticks or emails, they can go in in the morning, get the product or model they're working on and start working with that. And then fleet serve. Fleet serve is the ability to understand where that machine is working in the project. And when connected with ViewServe, really brings in the next dimension of understanding productivity, measuring productivity, what hours was that machine working, where was it working, and really giving a report and statistics of the different utilisation of the machines across the whole civil engine workflow. So another service we provide in ScanLaser is the ScanLaser Academy. We have many academies around Europe and we have one specific large academy in Stockholm. And in Stockholm, the ScanLaser Academy consists of many simulators. We use a simulator to educate and show operators on how to use machine control systems. This could be on 2D and 3D. In an environment that suits their needs and requirements, we use actual applications and to understand how to do trenching, grading, 3D work, whatever applications they want to use. The Scanlays Academy is perfect for new operators or operators who are just coming out of college and want to learn how to use machine control. It's also extremely useful for experienced operators who have driven an excavator or operated an excavator for many, many years. With this, they can now learn how to use machine control in an environment and at a pace that suits them. And often on a construction site, the uh, environment doesn't allow them to use all the different applications for that site. There may not be an opportunity to do trenching or embankments. But with the Scanlays Academy and the simulation, you can learn how to use all the application types and features and opportunities of our 2 and 3D machine control systems.